Dear brothers and sisters, this life is transient, its pleasures are temporary and full of temptations and tribulations. Prophet Muhammad wasallam said that this world is the prison for the believer and paradise for the non-believer. Which means you cannot do whatever your nafs dictates. Therefore, mind your steps and avoid the traps set by the Satan. And to know more, join me. Remember Allah, most glorious of names. Welcome back, my dear brothers and sisters. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We were talking about the upbringing of children. We all read in Surah Al-Kahf the story of Prophet Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khidr alayhi salam. And Al-Khidr, by the way, is one of the prophets of Allah. And Musa alayhi salam, he was commanded by Allah to go to Al-Khidr and to learn from the Khidr, as you know, in Surah Al-Kahf. And then Al-Khidr, he came and he find a child playing with the children. And he killed that child. And Musa alayhi salam objected. Because he didn't know why he killed the child. But then he explained to him. He said, this child, had he lived, he would have caused his parents to disbelieve in Allah. As you know, my dear brothers and sisters, and especially parents, out of love of the child, the parents will do anything the child wants. So if this child is going to be a disbeliever, rejectors of truth, and out of love they might follow him, so Allah Azza wa Jal, He saved them from that. So He took the child when He was still young. So whether you have children, if you have children, say Alhamdulillah. If you don't have, say Alhamdulillah. And this doesn't mean that you don't ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to have children. Now, before we, we have to be fair, before we start talking about the upbringing of children, we need to go quickly upon the rights of the child upon the parents. Every child has rights over his parents. The child has rights over his parents. Among his rights, first of all, is to choose the right mother, the pious mother, the God-fearing mother, the mother who will bring him upon the deen, the mother who will teach him from day one the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. Along with the milk, the mother feeds the Iman and the belief in Allah, in the oneness of Allah, along with the milk. So that is the right of the child. You have to choose the suitable mother, the right mother. Before that, even after the marriage, marrying the mother, when you want to, as a husband and wife, when you want to fulfill your biological needs, prior to that, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said that you supplicate and you say this famous dua, Allahumma jannibna shaytan wa jannib shaytana ma razaqtana. Oh Allah, save us and save our progeny from the cursed one, the devil. So if Allah gives you a child, the child will be protected from the devil. And when this child comes into this world, into life, the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam said, on the seventh day, you slaughter an animal, what we call aqiqah. You slaughter this aqiqah, why? To express your thankfulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said, two sheep for the boy and one sheep for the girl. So that's also among the rights of the child. Also among his rights, natural breastfeeding. Not giving him formula. Natural breastfeeding. That is the right of the child. Because mother doesn't give only milk. Gives affection, love through the milk. If a child never been breastfed by his mother, then he has no attachment. There's no attachment between the mother and the child. And guess what? Doctors, they say, they have found through studies, those mothers who breastfeed, the likelihood, the chance of having breast cancer is very less. And those mothers who don't breastfeed, that likelihood and chance of having breast cancer is very high. And in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that you breastfeed, a mother should breastfeed her child for two years. Two years. You breastfeed the child. Because that's the best milk you can give to the child. And as I said, you don't only give milk, you give other things. 
So that's also among the rights of the child. Now, bringing up the children. Bringing up children, no doubt, my dear brothers and sisters, is a responsibility, great responsibility. And especially on the shoulders of the parents. The parents, they are responsible. And they will be held accountable before Allah Azza wa So we have to take care of our children. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said that every one of you is a caretaker, shepherd. So he's responsible for his flock of sheep. So the husband is responsible and the wife as well. So among our responsibilities, first of all, a child should find that his parents are the role model. Because to a child, everything in this world, everything in this dunya is his father and mother. Because those are the two, he sees them always. So he takes his father and mother always as his example. So you have to be the role model, typical parents for him, so that he can take you as an example. Children, my dear brothers and sisters, they need love. Love is very essential in the life of the child. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu used to kiss his children, his grandchildren, Al Hassan and Al Hussein. And he said, Oh Allah, I love him, Al Hassan. So please love him too. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he loved children too much. So much so that the Sahaba, they would bring his children. They would bring the children to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to give them what we call tahnik, that is to give them date. And there are certain manners we have to teach the children. Among these manners, the manner of the eating, the etiquette of the table. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was eating and a child was eating with him, but the child, child's hand was moving, eating from this side and that side, etc. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, O oh, little child, say Bismillah, mention the name of Allah Azza wa Jal, and then eat from your side. You eat from your side. Also, the manners, we have to teach the children how to go to sleep. There are manners and adab that a Muslim child should know let alone the adult, that is to put your hands together like this and you blow and then you read the قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ وَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبَّ الْفَلَقْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبَّ النَّاسِ and you wipe over your body so you teach the children that this is how they should go to sleep this is, will be a protection from the devil against the shaitan and even if they are still, they cannot do this by themselves we can do it for them on their behalf so these are manners we have to teach to our children. Also, we have to teach them the etiquette, the etiquette of uh, responding to the call of nature, the etiquette of responding to the call of nature. What to say when you want to respond to the call of nature? Because Islam, as you know, is a code of life. So he teaches you what to do, even when you want to go to the toilet. So you teach the child the adab or the etiquette of responding to the call of nature. Also, teaching the children truthfulness, to tell the truth, not to lie. And unfortunately, unfortunately, many parents, they teach their children how to lie. How? You teach your child and you tell your child, lying is prohibited, lying is haram, lying is a sin. And then, one of your friends calls and the child picks the phone and the caller asks, is your daddy there? Is your father there? He says, yes, hold on. He goes, he calls you and you tell him, I'm not here. And the child goes back and he answers, daddy tells you he's not here. So, of course, the, other, the caller will know that you are there but you are teaching your child how to lie. So you are not a role model. You are not a good example. And then you tell your child, don't lie because lying, not telling the truth is bad. And then the child will be confused. Maybe children, for children is bad, for adults is good, maybe. So you are conf 